Crenshaw Sun is going down right here in the middle of California, IA. Eh? It's your boy Gordo. It is what it is. It is what we do. I was six years old riding shotgun in the old school with my dad. I grew up in Boyle Heights. I remember when I was a kid, the pops always said one day we'd all build a car together. Low riders are about family. What's up, daddy? Me and my homies, we've never been to Mexico. And no, our Spanish ain't perfect. But you can find us partying with the hipsters in Echo Park, chilling at the skate park in Venice, or doing karaoke in K-Town. But for kids like me, sometimes we do end up the night at Taco Zone. Yeah, we eat tacos. But why not, right? If it was up to my pops, I'd be fixing cars at his shop all day. I got a new wood in my This whole city is my canvas. I put up my art for free, and he wastes his money on car parts? That makes no sense to me. Stop the car. Stop the car. Red, what? What's wrong? What are you doing? We got caught. That's my scholarship, Dad. Come on, my gonna get caught. No, no, no. You need to hurry up, man. You have any idea what this calls your family? Writing your name and other people's property? Do you have an ounce of shame on a criminal like your brother? Do you know what people call me now? Ghost. Because for the last eight years, you haven't so much as mentioned my name to remind people that I exist. You're a joke, and nothing changes. Talk to your sons. I can't talk to my sons. They just don't want anything to do with me. When it's your kids, you don't stop trying. They ain't got no muscle, no hustle, no backbone. I stand alone, not just Special old school. What he's up against. They ain't hanging on to the coat sales of the next man. Pop forward in my left hand. Famous graffiti artists don't have to be poor to be real. That is your heritage. Something you know nothing about. I guarantee you, I'm gonna make it with my art. Everybody, give it up. Let's yeah. Hello. Hello. How are you, everyone? Yeah, thanks so much for being here, man. Thank you guys for having me and, uh, and being there. Congratulations on this film, which I would imagine, as much as there are massive names in front of the camera, behind the camera, it was probably a labor of love to get something like this made. It's not a culture that we normally explore. This is, uh, it's very hard because I've been involved and in, currently involved in some incredible projects. This film has a special meaning to me. It was serendipitous from the second it came to me. Um, and it just means a lot to me. And I think that this film is gonna take a lot of people by surprise because when you see it, um, you know, lowriders, you know, your mind might go to like Fast and Furious and this kind of stuff. And that, and that, that is a good way to go. The first Fast and Furious, that was more of like, you know, with the story behind it and about the brotherhood and the family and all that. Not the one where cars parachute out of planes and... <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with submarining and, and doing all that. I'm, you know, I want, let's be in the next one. Um, but, but, you know... <laughs> you know criticism yeah, is low. Just, you know, yeah. me, The Rock, and Jason can have a great scene. I just, you know, it is, uh, it's got this family story behind it, but more importantly, it's about heritage and culture and, and history and these incredible, beautiful works of art that we see lowriders, there's more to them than just the engine and the, and the wheels. There's, there's stuff that goes into that mural. There's family tradition that gets passed down. And, uh, and we get to see all that explored, wrapped in this amazing story of graffiti and cars and, and family and all that. So there's, there's a lot that's very special to me that I'm sure will come out. Talk about your own exploration into, into this culture. What did you know about it? What, what, were you, uh, what kind of research did you do? Uh, you know, I got really lucky. I, I, the projects I've been involved in, you know, I see somebody with a Spider-Man shirt on, you know, with Marvel, is I'm a kid who grew up uh, reading comics, uh, drawing comics, you know, thinking that that's what I was going to do. And now I get to be in the MCU and be in the Marvel Universe. So it, what people don't realize is it's hard for our minds to go around is comic books were a subculture. Now they're mainstream. I remember like five years ago, kids used to call themselves geeks and nerds like it was a cool right. underground thing. It's like, no... The mainstream is being a geek. And You're a geek now. if you don't know about, like, yeah. Captain America, Thor, Wolverine, Sabretooth. If you don't know about those guys, you're kind of almost like, that's become mainstream. With Sons of Anarchy, when the motorcycle clubs, when we went into that, and all these people turned down that show because they were like, who wants to watch stuff about motorcycle clubs? And now, I just got back two days ago from Bulgaria. I was doing a movie there for two months, and I'm jogging through the streets of Sofia, Bulgaria, and there's people wearing the Reaper on their shirt. 
you know, it, it's become global. Everybody knows about motorcycles now. Everybody, you know, rides and knows how to, you know, what we did in Sons of Anarchy, and they have a little more awareness of motorcycle clubs. So with this, I, when I lived in L.A., I was there for 15 years. I lived in East L.A. This was, this is an everyday occurrence, low riding. And it's not, you don't own a low, a low rider. You are a low rider. And the community and, and, and what goes on on Whittier and, and Elysian Park and how, watching the families come around and how it is it's so beautiful that when this came around you know when brian grazer kind of conceptualized this whole thing and wanted to do this with mr cartoon and estevan it was like that's right after he did uh, eight mile you know and eight mile was another film that not a lot of people knew about rap battling and not a lot of people knew about that and now everybody knows about it hip-hop's in the forefront of everything now that's kind of what he felt with this. And I think that those make the best stories where we can go and enjoy a movie, enjoy a TV show, but also learn about something that we never knew about. That, to me, is the most interesting stuff. Sort of get a window into a, com a completely different culture that we either normally don't talk about or we talk about the criminal element of it for the most part. Like often yep. lowriders and Chicano culture in LA yep. is, is, is viewed from the, from the criminal lens, especially right now. 100%. And, and, and you know, in a character like Ghost, I mean, on the exterior, you see this kid who's, you know, who, who's straight out the joint. He's, you know, covered in tattoos. He's got this, you know, wall of armor up. And he's coming with a lot of anger. And uh, he's got a lot of things that he wants to work out. And he's not happy about and then you realize why people are like that. You know, I, I have a lot of friends that have been through the prison system. I have a lot of family members that have. And what happens is most there's a lot that goes on when you're in there. You do a lot of thinking. Time stops. You know, you come out and, and the world has changed and you haven't, you know, or maybe you have, but, you know, in, in different ways. And he is coming into this seeing his brother is older, you know, mom being gone and has these unresolved issues with his father. And to me, that was what drew me to it so much because there's a lot of things that happened during this film. I mean, uh, one, uh, my son was born, which was... Congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, when I was making... The, thank you. That's a, clap, clap for him. He, he, he gets all the attention in the world. He needs the clapping, too. He needs... Uh, we, we call him King. His name is Kane, and we call him King. So they're already setting him up to be... Uh, to, to with a lot, a lot of expectations, too. yeah. I mean, everybody calls him King. Um, you can see him on the playground, or they call me King. That's amazing. Like, already, people walk in, they're like, King Kane. I'm like, oh, man, here we go. This kid's going to have an ego the size of Texas. Um, but, you know, that was very meaningful to me because I did not have that relationship with my father. You know, my father was, you know, a very different uh, human being than probably most people are used to and was kind of, we had this very strained relationship uh, ultimately, and then just didn't have any relationship, and you know now he's he's gone. So when this came up, this was cathartic for me. I I needed to do this film. I wanted to do this film. So also, you know, one of my acting uh, I never use the word, but one of my uh, let's call him a titan, uh, but acting idols is is Demian. So to amazing. He's he's incredible. He's he's a giant in this industry. And when you get to act across giants, you're better just by absorption. You know, you become better. So to see him playing my dad, I had these like flashes like my real dad used to have a mustache and had this whole thing. And, you know, so there was all this stuff that was being worked out through this. And then also my son's being born you know, at, at, during the film. So it was, and we didn't know what we were having, my wife and I. So now all of a sudden I'm, I find out, you know, when I get there that day, I flew to New York from LA and I have a boy. So it's all on this and in this film. And I think that's why it's so special to me. This was a very serendipitous film. It took a little to, for it to come together. And uh, the first time I put this trailer on my Facebook, on my Facebook, which I don't even, you know, I'm not a big social media guy, it was reached by 24 million people in 48 hours. And it, I've always said this, you know, never underestimate the power when you give a, a voice to people who don't usually see themselves represented on screen. Uh, and, and I think that that's why this film is extremely special. And I think you've seen it. Um, it's got a lot of terrific aspects for everyone. Uh, so I'm excited for people to see it.
you talk about Demian uh, Bashir, he's one of those actors who he doesn't have, it feels like he doesn't have to try. There's some sort of charisma going on there. There's a scene in the film, the scene that he has with you, where the, the sort of emotional, the, the big emotional moment, but then also the scene that he has with Ava Longoria where I think he's relapsed, right, and, and he's drunk. I, you're watching an actor, it's like Mickey Rourke in his heyday, which is like, God, this, this guy doesn't feel like he's trying hard, but he has taken over the camera and the screen, and it's incredible how compelling he is. Yeah, he, it's effortless. He's one of the funniest people, yet he plays all these incredibly deep roles. Um, he's just, you know, he's not a he's not a large guy, but when he when he steps on to set, you feel like he's nine feet tall. You know, I've had that with a few actors that I've worked with. You know, Alfre Woodard, you know, uh, Mahershala and I just got to do some really great stuff on Luke Cage. You know, um, you 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 get in with these people, and and it just. It's like having a great dance partner. You know, if anybody dances here, if you have a bad dance partner, you're just not a good dancer. But if you're a bad dancer and you have someone that's great, you just by association become a better dancer. And that's kind of, I've been really fortunate with that. With, you know, with Katie Seagal on, on, on Sons of Anarchy, I've been opposite these people who um, really are, you know, juggernauts in the industry. And, uh, and, I, and, and in a very cool you know, way. So I, I, I'm, I'm super excited for this. And uh, what's your process great. like when you go into a scene like that with Dem with, with an actor like Demian Bashir, where you have to be big and emotional, and it's a it's a huge moment for your character. But the way that he's playing his character for the most part, and the way that he acts, is not necessarily matching that. Yeah. I'm sure you're finding some sort of match in terms of energy, but yeah. he just naturally has to play at lower energy than 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 where you're going. The greatest stories, one, one of the things that drives me nuts, and just let me get this out there because it'll probably tell you a little about me, is I despise when actors talk about acting. It's just, it's one of those things. I just think it's absolutely ridiculous. But for a moment, I'll do this, is I, I don't know why I do. It's just one of these things that, like, everybody has their kind of own thing, and it's, it's, it's this thing, but... And they get really, like, self-involved about it. Um, but on that note... With Demian, that was the first scene we ever did together, and it was the first time I met him, was on the steps, the scene that's in the trailer. Um, it was the Wild. first time I met him. How did you feel about that? We didn't even in meet. Terms of that we didn't say hello. Like, you see it on the schedule, and you're like, really? Yeah. I have to, the first time I'm going to meet this first guy? First time I'm going to meet him. That way? First, uh, I, th I preferred it that way. Wow. It's, uh, I, I preferred it because there's a part of you that doesn't want to like the person, <laughs> you know what I mean? There's a party that doesn't want to get to know them too well. There's a part of you that wants to create that uh, separation, especially with such a strained relationship that these two have. Um, acting is acting, um, but also, you know, there's, you know, you're, you're, you're feeling this, you're getting into this. And for me, it was just bringing up so much stuff that I've had you know, that I've been working on, that I've been dealing with, that I've done throughout my life. And it was like to have that all kind of collide in this beautiful moment uh, was, was really cool. So when you see that in any scene, just like in life, if we all start talking, I don't know what you're going to say. and You don't know what I'm going to say. But we figure it out and we get to it. And either, uh, you know, I'm going to like you or I'm not going to like you or it's going to go one way or it's not. I think the, the, the greatest trick in acting is pretending you don't know what's going on. And uh, what's great is when you're with someone like Demian, he's throwing all these different things at you. So it makes you react in a very organic, natural way. So you didn't want to sort of go into, into that moment and having have met him before and had a great time with him, then all of a sudden have to sort of redirect your brain back into what you're imagining him to be. You can just have a kind of blank canvas. That's right. You know, I, could, I can almost go in just not knowing anything about him. I have, I, he's, he's, he's nothing to me until he's Miguel. I'm going to ask something really sure. dirty. Is that something that you talked to the director about or Damien talked to the director about in terms of scheduling or was that something that the director naturally knew to do and you were like, this is a great idea. I'm not, I, can, I can actually, it'll be easier for me to do the job. We were running and gunning on this film so we were moving pretty quick because, um, you know, it's not a giant budget film. It's not, you know, one of these big summer blockbusters so you're kind of moving pretty quick. Um, I uh, generally uh, stay alone when I'm doing certain films, I, I, I always stay back from everyone, uh, depending on the film. 
depending on the project. Um, I generally kind of keep my space. Um, I'm a kid that's been working since he was nine years old, so I, I, I work is work to me. I just always, uh, I go in and I, and I, and I work, and, and then after it, I, I'm down. I love everybody, I wanna do everything, but when I'm there, I'm, when I'm working, I'm there to work. And um, I'm just usually away from everyone. So people kind of always kind of have a really good understanding that Theo's you know, in some closet in this room over there hiding out, and when you're ready to shoot, he's gonna come out. Um, just because it's really, you know, it's hard to, to uh, I'm, I, I, either I'm not good enough. I remember Daniel Day-Lewis saying something like, somebody was like, you know, why are you a method actor and have to be in it all the time? And he said something like, I'm just not good enough to kind of come in and out of it. And I think that uh, I try really hard to do that, but when it's, when it's roles like this, when it's certain things like that, I just kind of have to be more um, to myself and more internal. And then when we get into the funner stuff, when we're at a Legion Park, when we're doing the, you know, the contest, when we're doing stuff like that, I'm, I'm down, I'm hanging, I'm doing whatever. But when it's stuff like that, with stuff with uh, Miguel and Francisco, it's, uh, it's more to me. So, yeah, the director has an idea, and everybody has an idea, and, you know, Ricardo and I were just, like, bosom buddies the whole time, so we, we knew what was up. Let's go for a question right here. There you go. Hello. Hello. Uh, because of your personal connection to this character, would you stand him out with uh, amongst the other roles that you play in the past, such as Ghost and Juice? Mm -hmm. I've, I've always been lucky enough to have these nicknames, um, Shades and Ghost and Juice. I, I, I'm going to play like Blaze or something next. I, I don't know what's next. I, I only go by one word at this point. Um, he's very different, and at the same time, he has certain similarities. Uh, I've been extremely fortunate in the, in the characters I've gotten to play. Juice was, the difference between a film and a television show is if you're lucky enough, you have seven or eight years to, to tell a story of a character a la Juice on Sons of Anarchy. It was every year there was a different part of him coming out. Uh, in this movie, you have two months or a month, whatever it is, to tell the entire world of a character that you might never see again. Um, so some are spaced out. So to compare him to guys like, you know, Shades' story is just beginning, you know, on Cage. You know, um, it, it's, it's harder because with TV, it's very different. Yeah. Next question. Uh, thank you for coming today. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to know, uh, what are some of your passions outside of acting? Man, uh, you know, I, I have multiple businesses that I'm crazy about. You know, uh, we have... Uh, you know, we have a production company, we have our, our water business, you know, we have um, a lot of different charities, you know, that we uh, do stuff for from the Humane Society to the Garden of Dreams to, to all different uh, advocacy groups that, you know, World Wildlife and everything that we're just trying to help out and make the world a better place. Um, your production company, which you, you were here for yeah. a few weeks ago, the movie that you released, Bad Hurt. Bad Hurt. Yeah. I see a little bit of Bad Hurt in Low Riders, just in the sense that we don't get that many films about the working class yeah. that, that come out of Hollywood or, or yeah. independent film. We only get like a couple a year. The Which is interesting because most of the country, I mean, public. most of the viewing public is working class. Um, I totally agree with you. Uh, space age adventures. <laughs> <laughs> right. Which is, you know, suspension of disbelief and, and we get to escapism and, and all that, which I know a lot of people uh, are looking for. It's also nice to be grounded into the real stories like Moonlight and Manchester by the Sea and kind of see stuff that we... Uh, we, a lot of people have a hard time living in that world for two hours or three hours. I, you know, to me, I, that's what I want to see. Same. You know, um, we're, we're from the same thing. Why we compared this to Saturday Night Fever is, uh, you know, that we want to live in that world. Um, I would say any comparison to Saturday Night Fever is high praise for me. Me too. Yeah. Me too. It's as good as it gets. Um, but, you know, so for me, my passions outside right now have been, uh, I run marathons. I run a lot of different races. I just ran a race uh, when I landed from Bulgaria. I ran uh, like a Spartan race uh, two days later, um, which was a bad idea. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm a father before anything. Everything I do from the second I open my eyes to the second I pass out at night because I don't opt to fall asleep. I just kind of pass out somewhere, um, is, uh, is for my son and, and future family. You know, it's, um, it's to show them that anything's possible. So, so my hobbies at this present moment are uh, creating the best life that I can for my son, to show him that 
he can absolutely do anything. That's kind of, uh, I say that's my job before all my businesses, before acting, before all the nonsense of everything else. It's, uh, it's that. It's being a father, and I'm, I'm, I love it. I do have time for one more question right here. Hi. Hi. Hi, thank you for being here. Um, so, you know, you've had such uh, a wide career, you know, different kinds of roles between TV and film. Um, I'm wondering, is there any kind of genre or maybe like subject matter that you haven't really covered yet or that you would like to? Star Wars. <laughs> I'm obsessed with Star Wars. I, 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 I'm, I absolutely uh, am one of those kids that just gets tickled every time I see anything to do with Star Wars, whether it be a new trailer. Have or you auditioned or, or put, your name, put your no, head, name in No, no. I think, I think now they're starting to move in the direction of, uh, uh, you know, where you never know because there's so many, uh, the spinoffs and all the other stuff. You know, that world has kind of been pretty set up with the characters, the, and now it's kind of really expanding. So we'll see. I'm just, you know, uh, I remember they were showing a, a behind-the-scenes video of, uh, of when The Force Awakens first came out, and seeing John, uh, you know, Boyega see the Millennium Falcon and just seeing his natural reaction, I feel like that would be my exact natural reaction of just like, what is happening here? Um, how is this possible? So for someone like me, uh, that is definitely um, something because I tend to play and uh, tend to go around people that are either very violent or have... Uh, a whole library full of issues with them. You know, it would be nice to, I don't mind that. It would be nice to maybe like sit across from a pretty girl and have an espresso and like come into work and just be calm uh, and not have to, not have to think about, you know, uh, things that get you to a place of, you know. You a nice romantic comedy. I would love a romantic that. comedy. I, I think that those need to come back. What a meet cute scene, right? I need a love actually. I need like Notting Hill. I need my Notting Hill in like, you know, to be taking place in New York City. You know, I, I, I think that um, I haven't, you know, I don't think, I got to be honest, I don't think I've ever, Alfre Woodard on Cages might be the first uh, girl I ever kissed on screen. I've been doing this for a long time, you know, because I always play you know, like I said, either the violent criminal or the, you know, or the misunderstood or, or something like that. So I say Star Wars, but I really mean romantic comedies. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, let's do this again. Lowriders comes out this Friday. Yeah, May 12th. Pretty excited about it. Um, and just get out and see it. I think it's going to be one of those films that, uh, you know, and thank God the reviews so far have been pretty incredible. Uh, Somebody mentioned Mickey Rourke in one of the reviews. You'll see it in The Hollywood Reporter. Oh, wow, look at that. They compared Ghost to a young Mickey Rourke. I was like, Did I'll really? take that for Angel Heart and I Hope Regret and Bill. Yeah, there you He's go. He's in there somewhere. He's in the movie. He's in, Mickey Rourke is somewhere in here. Uh, Low Riders uh, this Friday. Theo yeah, Rossi, everybody. Very excited. Thank, Thank you, guys. Yeah.